c'est le temps de chiette. Unexpected warm winds that brought the temperature much higher than expected for the season. The snowstorms we prepared for had turned into icy rain which seemed to have followed us all the way from Belgium. We were still excited of finally starting after months of planning. Ouais <laughs> Le... Euh... Ouais, temps de chiottes. I'm about 50 cm deep in Watchers Lake and it's right now minus I don't know how much and it's going above my shoes. I don't know what to do. I'm done. I'm it's going above as well. We can't do back much. As hard as our first day was, we were here, in the Arctic, in winter, skiing through deserted landscapes. No Wi-Fi, no electricity. This was the adventure we had been preparing for so long, and it was just starting. C'est joli! We left the next morning with clear skies and only a few clouds in sight. But before we knew it, the clouds had thickened and the wind picked up. It only got worse and a blizzard hit us suddenly. The visibility dropped to just a few meters. We decided to change route and seek shelter in the nearest hut. The hut was packed with people, but we managed to squeeze in and find a bed. Our effort was rewarded by the best northern light we had seen so far. To reach our next destination, we had to tackle the mountain pass from Chakta Hut. The descent on the other side was steep and would require us to use the telemark technique, a skiing style where the heel is free to lift off the ski. None of us were particularly skilled at this, but nothing a good YouTube tutorial can fix. Learning the downhill element of cross-country skiing liberates us to ski anywhere with confidence and pleasure. Now we can do almost anything on cross-country skis with simple toe bindings and sturdy boots. Very quickly, we realized a YouTube tutorial made it look much easier than it was, so we just prepared for the worst and went for it. As the only way forward was down and none of us knew how to telemark, we all came up with our own techniques. Strategy number one, no braking, no turning. Makes everything easier, by Benoit. Strategy number two, fall to brake, fall to turn. This was followed by Gilles. He is the most experienced skier on the team. He has almost a decade of experience in alpine skiing. And as you can see from this footage, it really paid off. Strategy number three, 
Strategy number three, be smart and walk down by Kami. Recognize your own weaknesses, embrace them and remove your skis. This proved to be the fastest method so far. Strategy 3.5 is a combination of all previous methods. You start skiing down, realize how hard it is, embrace the ego hit, give up, and then start walking down using Kami's method. This was my approach. We reached Alka, but the weather was bloody awful. So we slowed down and stopped at Singi, where we ate some more couscous. I fell through a frozen lake and we chilled around the fire. The next day we had to catch up for lost time, but the satellite forecast was looking good. The forecast was spot on, cold and dry. We hit the trail gliding through the vast white landscapes. The silence was broken only by the sound of our skis. The repetitive scrape on the frozen snow was like a guiding melody, leading us to our next step. As we approach our next destination, the vegetation became denser and the terrain steeper. Our telemark skills hadn't improved since our last descent, so we once again unmounted our skis and began walking down. There was a thin layer of ice that built up on top of the snow, causing our feet to randomly sink into the ground. It felt like a game of minesweeper where each step was a potential landmine. Kinda fun, kinda sketchy. Thankfully, this did not stop us from making it in time to the next hut, read some books, eat some couscous, and have one of our best sauna sessions so far. <coughs> the next morning, we crossed yet another lake on our way to the final destination of this trip. We were headed to Saltulwokta, a place that is known for the legend of the mysterious chef. A long time ago, a famous chef from Stockholm grew tired of cooking for ungrateful customers. No matter how hard he tried, there was always someone who complained. Frustrated with the lack of appreciation, the chef decided to leave Stockholm and find a new place where people would appreciate his food. He headed north, all the way to Saltulwokta, a remote hut that serves as a rest stop for tired skiers and hikers. It is said that from that point on, no one ever left Saltulwokta hungry or unhappy. We were about to find out if it was Today true. Is, uh... Meatloaf of moose with that is